I kept the cheeks the same, I kept the foundation the same, I just darkened my lips. So as you can see, Momo and I went and got all faces built. We, uh, there were some girls that were doing training and they needed models. And I said, Vogue, Vogue, strike Vogue. AKA my job was like, hey, are you free this day? We need models. And I was like, I guess. I'll bring someone. <laughs> That's technically what actually happened. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, for um, those who don't know, I actually work for a makeup company. Mm -hmm. As you can see. I don't always project that I look like that, but you know, I have days. I have dark You don't look up day today. You can do yours. Well, no, I mean, are you trying to say I look bad all the time? You can do your. No, <laughs> I normally, I just, I have to go in there and just darken my lips a little bit and just lessen my brow because it was a very strong brow. It was a very strong brow. It was dominant. And, and I mean, I like a strong brow, like I do, but not that strong. So I just, I just changed it just a little bit. What it means is that we're going to be a mess. <laughs> we're going to be mugging to the camera, but at least you got something cute to look at. It's always soft. I mean, someone told me I always look at the camera and kind of mug anyway. Do they? I think so. I don't think so, but it's whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> and I got her a bunch of free products, so. Yeah. I was like, it, I literally looked at my bag and I'm like, I already have all of this. Doing O'Brien. <laughs> this is her look so she can still do a little Brian's virginity. <sighs> <laughs> I'll take it. Some virginity that he has. We Lord. haven't decided which one. The butt virginity. Yeah, I'm not even sure. So, listener Q&As. Woo! Beacon Hills after dark. Y'all, yesterday was crazy. So, uh, later on, we're going to be doing part two yeah. of our podcast. Jeff, Davis is usually background. in her house. I mean, usually my house is a safe haven. But for some weird reason, this one decided to bring the curse over to my house. I know. And it was, she started an effect. But it's all good. We're going to get it back tonight. I have, we, like, we lost, like back a whole up bunch of, to the back up. We lost one of the best banters we had ever had. We had pretty good banter. On Highlander, which is a TV Highlander, show for all you yeah. young kids that used to start... start Niagara um, Falls. That used to come on years and years ago. It was based on the movie series. And it starred, I can't remember who it was right now offhand, but he was Duncan McLeod of the Cloud McLeod. Oh, okay. 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 We, we, we also now, talked about Miley you, Cyrus no, and her half mess. Yeah, we did talk about Miley Cyrus on the Again, one, too. But the first banter was way better because all the shades we threw. So we're not going to talk about Lost. We're going to talk about the future and what's now and what's found. Surrey the Hobbit says, uh, that GIF set of the Steel car combo, I haven't watched most of the season yet and probably <laughs> won't. Your podcast and GIFs is all I need. But I am here for Theo bringing Dark Styles back into the game again. I have tingles just from the GIFs. Oh boy. Can I have Murder Boyfriends and Steo? And then later Derek bringing Styles back to the uh, good. Murder Boyfriends. Guys, please. And I say, yeah. I'm all about the murder boyfriends. People don't understand. Now, it looks like we may get Murder Malio. And Which I'm here for that, too. too. I always wanted her to be a shady, dark character. Mm -hmm. I said it from the beginning. I actually would have liked her more if she was actually an evil character. So if she's out there murdering and killing with Theo, I am here for that. And they can kill both their asses off. Yes. How about that? You stole my orphan. You better she give me another murder couple. Thank That's you. Oh, yes. How the hell you still... You, Still upset about the orphans. I know. Oliver Swirl, I'm pouring one out. Oliver for you. Swirl, I'm gonna pour one out into my mouth. I don't, I don't have a drink right now, so I can't do no. that. No, I'll do it for you and spur it. So I love Sir the Hobbit. Meet She's you at amazing. The so um, sorry. So you won't be lonely. You won't be lonely. And I'm gonna miss everybody. And I'm gonna miss everybody. Oh, oh. And I'm gonna miss everybody. Living in a hair full world. And it's straight to heavy roll. And we pray, and we pray, and we pray, and we pray. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Man, people don't know about bone thugs. I mean, they it's know the first of the month. month. Wake up, wake up, wake up, yeah. Um, so they fell Man. below one million viewers for the fa finale, finally. We rejoiced, y'all. We were so happy. Mm -hmm. And I knew it. And I knew it. I said, I'm she not going to jinx it. She brought a bottle it. of wine yesterday but I was to like, celebrate this. It was fantastic. 
Somebody drank. Just to just to have the um, not justification, but just to have just the knowledge that your show is sucking and people are noticing. So now I need you to get it back together. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Um, shout outs to Nani. I've answered this on the page, but, um, Anani, he said, you know, I know this has nothing to do with Teen Wolf, but they took my grandma to the hospital again. Can I ask you and your followers to pray for her? I love her so much. It hurts. Oh, I just don't want to lose her. Yeah. Sending your condolences out. I was really close to my grandma, so, mm -hmm. um, anyone who knows me knows that. And so, yeah, I'm definitely sending out prayers for you. Definitely. And, ooh, it looks like maybe it didn't go through. Definitely. So yeah, um, just let us know, like keep us updated, you can keep it on anonymous, just let us know um, how she's doing. Because if we really need to, we'll send you a card. Mm -hmm. We'll get your info. Exactly. She and, and then once I figure out how to actually send people cookies through mail, I want to send people some cookies or brownies. Yeah. Oh I lord. I know you <laughs> We're going to get arrested. You're going to have Papa McCall at our house talking about look. <laughs> Can I get them cookies, though? So, uh, I mean, Anonymous says Void Styles is coming back. I, I want so. I, I, I think if it's done right, they can. If Theo's plan is as long-term as I think it could be, maybe. It just depends. I personally think that the way they were giving hints, he could have been Dark Styles in season four. Mm -hmm. The way they were giving hints, even this season he could have been Dark Styles, but they kind of were doing this weird thing where they wanted his humanity and stuff like that, but then they were also like, oh, is he a human? And my thing is like, if he's not a human, just don't make him a human. That way we know. Like, like, right. like give us some clues that he's not. I totally would have been okay with him still not being a human. Well, it still makes you mad because, because of course, fans came up with a spark theory. Mm -hmm. That they're like, oh no, he's, he's not that. I don't, I don't even know what that is. That sounds crazy. Blah, 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 blah. But it's like, you can give the fans what they want and still be true to your story. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I personally, if they do it right, there's so many shows that have done a dark arc for mm -hmm. a character properly. And I think they could. You know they had to do it for a long term. Fucking, what was it, Dean? Dean had a demon in him for like three episodes. Mm -hmm. We waited for a whole season for this to happen. And we got three really good episodes as him and the demon and then he was like hey okay we're over and I'm like that's good yeah you know I mean Buffy did the same thing Buffy had a whole entire season of a dark arc so, so I'm like Willow did like 10 episodes like you, you can do that just do it properly mm -hmm. and I just don't trust Team Wolf but I would be here yeah. if they tried if you they... know what if they tried it to come back to it exactly I but that's that's a lot of what Team Wolf is we want them to try but they are so halfway in doing things that you're just like, are you really trying? Or are yeah. you just throwing stuff and seeing what sticks? Yeah. But so Anonymous know. says, I think it's telling that Brayden comes back and most of the reactions are, oh, this means Derek is going to come back, right? No. Like they seriously screwed her over in season four since she and Derek were basically just love interest that season. But at least they can try and give her a chance in 5B. I really need her to be there and not say a single word about Derek. Mm -hmm. I need her... I would prefer that, too. ...to be her. Because the thing is, is that she was her own separate energy, and then they made her what they do a lot of black characters. They either make you be a prop for a white character, which they doing for Malia, obviously. Mm -hmm. They brought her in to help Malia's storyline. Or they make you a love interest, and then they end up making you a love interest to a guy or a girl, depending on the show. And you end up propping them for the next romance that they have a mm -hmm. lot of times. Or you end up becoming so desexualized either before or after. Yeah. That it, there's a, a very they similar can, trope they always do for black characters. They can never every find a happy show. medium. Yeah. Almost every single show, especially when they play opposite of a white character or the one minority out of like 10 mm -hmm. white people, they're always that same way. You, you, people might think I'm wrong, but I'm being really honest. There's been studies done on this. There's actually been a lot of writing for a lot of different magazines on this um, where they've talked about this whole trope. And to me, if they bring Brayden back, she needs to have her own storyline. So the thing is that she had a fan base and she had lost a lot of people yeah. because of that last season. And I don't think it was just because she was Derek's love interest. I actually was interested in them mm -hmm. being a love interest, especially with the banter that she they had with the hell. They could have sold it. And I don't, that's what I don't understand about this show. 
it it because it makes them look petty mm-hmm. when they don't. If you want to kill Steric, kill Steric. But the way to do it is to make it so that you can't argue against Stalia and against Drayden. Make them good couples. Yeah. Why would you make them awful couples? And that's the thing. Because the thing is, is that, like, they could have been a really good couple. I think she could have really been someone to teach him how to have humanity. Like, she could have told I, him I stuff. did it like that only because, um... I think there could have been a different way of doing it. Exactly. It would have needed to be different. Salia, that's a that's yeah. that you just can't say. <laughs> but I think they could have had a really. I think Drayden could have actually been a, a ship that actually did something and would have been different. And if, like I said, if you wanted to keep Steric on the side, that's fine. Like, there's ways to do so much, but they just kind of ruin it. And the thing is, like, I'm like, I like the banter, the banter between her and, and uh, Anne. Right. Peter and her were actually a great little banter. They could have had that, and I would have been like, you know what, I'm, I'm Drake, Derek, who? But, um. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm only afraid of her coming back in in five B because I feel like she's only going to be the prop Malia story, and, and she's going to get two lines every other episode. She's going to get two lines, if if any, mm-hmm. and then she's going to get killed off trying to save Malia, which has happened in a lot of shows. I do not need you to be she another freaking. Already. I don't need you to be another Bonnie Bennett. Okay, Bonnie Bennett died so many damn times. Mm-hmm. Raised damn people on freaking Vampire Diaries. I don't need you to be dying on Team Wolf and be permanently dead for fucking Malia. Just saying. Basically. Damn, I don't even know if, D- if Dean's still alive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dean's the one who always comes back from everything. And now I don't even know if he's alive. There's just so much. We'll talk about that during the podcast, but there was just so much wrong with that whole we thing. We will. So, uh, Juliana CG17 says, uh, <laughs> oh, so she's quoting me. I said, what I hope in my heart and hearts is that the zombie army was a contingency plan. Like, F it. Plan A didn't work. So, on to plan B. I'm also thinking More maybe. Like plan Z. Girl, exactly. <laughs> ah, nice. Dark Pet is uh, a little more long term, and zombie pack is a part of that. And she said, that's exactly what I thought, too, because the plan was to get Liam to kill Scott and steal the alpha power, so then he could steal it from Liam, Mm -hmm. but Liam didn't, and so he could kill Scott, but not steal the power, Mm -hmm. supposedly. Um, So he really couldn't be... Knowing him, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just to put a little bit more of that rip in there. I honestly just don't know what they're trying to do with that. Um, Can I just say, mm -hmm. if... 5B ends up showing that Theo is still a better pack leader. Than oh, right, he has. He was better. like, I brought y'all back from the dead. I made y'all. He, they were like, who are you? He's like, I'm the alpha. They're like, okay. You know, Scott is spending the whole time on the He alpha. had a better pack when he had the regular group more yeah. pack. I bet you he's going to make this zombie group such a good pack. We're going to be like, do you really want to kill them off again? You see how he's working with them? They are working as a team. I know they're evil, but I'm rooting for them. Mm-hmm, exactly. I really don't want him. Like, I love Theo, but I would be so ashamed if he ends up being a better pack. Then be prepared to be ashamed, because you know that's coming. <laughs> he is. I already know he is. It's just... Klaxicon Hexis. I love his name. I really can't understand JD. I mean, other showrunners I know of get rid of the characters and storylines that don't work, even long-running ones. Doing that improves the overall quality of their shows. Jeff, though, wants to stick rid- rigidly to his five-year story arc with no changes. He doesn't seem to know how to adapt to change, i.e. Colton, Crystal, and Daniel, leaving them with the show changing its target audience to a younger demographic. Then with Tyler H. leaving and the extremely forced entrance of Malia, the show has lost its positive momentum and since season four is sliding backwards. Never in my life have I seen a st- show destroy itself and its fan base so completely as Team Wolf has can done. I, Hold I on, wait, wait, wait. Really Sticky Keys, you and Momo sure need more than one bottle of wine for the rewatch. Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to answer that. This is the thing. If he wanted to stick to this five-year arc so badly, he should have just recast Jackson end of the story. It seems like he's trying to have it both ways, but he's unsure of which ways those mm-hmm. are. He <laughs> just that, like, if you didn't want to continue Jackson's story, or at least hint to it, you could have t- loosely tied it up, and then gone to the Hellfire. Mm-hmm. Which was your second main And then arc. come back to Jackson's Jackson. thing later on. Exactly. We even said, I think, on the podcast how they could have reintroduced Jackson, which is one of the best 
stolen ideas from Doctor Whoever, but it would have worked. And you know what? Because we're an audience that isn't really familiar with that type of shit, we would have believed it. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where you could have done it. You the problem done is it. that their PR, their PR is a huge mm -hmm. problem and has made it so that because they, they waited so long to act on it and to acknowledge that it was an issue, the yeah. rumors were already swirling specifically about Colton. And, you know, you're like, oh, Colton left, blah, blah, blah. If they would have recast him right away, we would have been like, oh, Colton had to go do another show, so they recast his part. Having that void empty and then not closing up those storylines made it confusing we're, and it made us think, like, oh, like, we're a society, really went up on them. We're a society that has soap operas that come on midday that change people like they All change the time. their underwear. When they changed Belle from Xenon, I was mm -hmm. so upset, but I got over it. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Most of us would have got, got over it. and then you have, would have had a lot of people who had just started the show in season three who had no clue who this person was. Then mm -hmm. you would have been okay with it. And that's why I said you could have actually done the arc you wanted if you had just recast. Right. And if not, you should have wrapped it up it started with the other arcs that you had, which you'd never finished. Because, and then you end up losing those people, too, which means that you had not only another large arc. Like, all you had to do was just learn how to finish something or close something. That's mm -hmm. all it was. You could, we would have probably loved the Hells even more if yeah. you actually just done. I was okay with Korra coming in. I was okay with I, this. And that was another thing. Korra's entrance was nonsense. It was. But we, we got over it. Exactly. However, then when you take her character, she's such an important character to Derek's uh, mm -hmm. progress, to Peter, to mm -hmm. all of them. When you drop her, like, just recast her. Exactly. When you drop her, it's just such a slap and in the face. And that's because, again, you had these storylines that needed to work together. And also... But then they add in six more new characters. And, and you're like, like, what's the point? And that's the thing that makes me mad is the fact that they'll add six extra characters. And I'm just like finish the first arc. You, why didn't you just recast this person? You could have really recast the girl who plays um, Hayden as Cora. Exactly. She could have been Cora, and I would have been like, we have a new Cora. Continue the storyline. Because evidently wanna... they're South American. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, that, that's all they had to do. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Cody, who plays talking Theo, could have been the new Jackson. I would have been like, I am here for this. They're exactly. If they had just, if I would have been like, you know what? Because I see the chemistry with him and everyone, I would be like, I'm here for this. Like, instead, what they do, they either kill off the characters, they just disappear without any answers, they give some jackass, oh, they're just happen to be in France or England, or they do what everyone does, they just disappear, no one remembers them. Exactly. Danny, coach. That's insane. Like, and, like, but I have... don't understand why they can't put in. Oh man, I can't believe Coach got transferred. Why can't you put that? Like in? a normal You can show. replay an entire scene, copy paste from start to finish, but you can't give us one sentence that explains where Coach is. Exactly, because that's all he had to do was say Coach got injured. Coach finally gave up yep. after all the crap that he went through, which he surely was going to do anyway. Exactly. They all they had to say. Instead, they act like they just never. That person never existed. Mm hmm. And then on top of that, what they end up doing, especially with Danny, is they give major things to other characters. So all of a sudden you get Parrish coming in, and Parrish is obviously the computer guy, and he's this and this, and I'm like, you literally are a white Danny. <laughs> Basically. Like, yeah. And Danny still had more interaction and more chemistry with Lydia. Mm -hmm. In the very few scenes that he had. And he actually did have, remember it, in season one and two, he had scenes with Lydia. Way more yeah. chemistry than Parrish does. I'm sorry, Ryan Which is Kelly. So I think you're beautiful, but Maris is some shit. Yeah. You actually, you know what? It's so Maris boring. actually is more boring than Celia. I actually would rather watch Celia than Parrish. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my I'm god, going, going to agree with you only because um, oh my, my main thing against Celia is that it is Celia. But if I had to choose, okay, had to choose I would two, rather two. just have regular scenes as long as they weren't kissing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could work but with that. But think about that. Mm -hmm. You would, I would rather, yeah, no, I wouldn't want to see them. I don't really want to see anyone on that show really make out. A lot of exactly. them don't really interest they, me enough to make yeah. out. Because I don't think they ever do the make out scenes really right. They haven't done a good make out scene since season one or two for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I actually would rather sit through, oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this. An hour of Celia. Then an hour of Marish. Ooh, dang! Oh!
Oh. And the only thing that actually... I I'm actually, just going to gouge my really, eyes out. The thing that's really funny <laughs> is the only marriage scene that I kind of enjoyed was the one where he was first teaching her how to fight. Yes, Simba. Post up to my page, please. Um, I'm post to my page. You can post to my it. page. Link me to it. I'll, I'll tag you. And then you. I will... But no, I'm just saying... Like, the, that was the only thing is when he first was trying to make, because I was, you know, making the quarter joke and stuff like that, because I can make jokes. The rest of them, I haven't really even had any thunder to kind of take a joke to. I was, exactly. I actually, well, the final episode, for people who don't know, I actually was on Twitter reading people's comments. Yeah. Doing the entire marriage scenes. I actually didn't even realize they were right. boring. That's how boring they were. I didn't care to watch them. The only time I actually watched them, I think, was... Was it at the very beginning when they were still at the Nimitz? Mm -hmm. Or was that the last? Or was that the episode before? So that like, was like, yeah. That was like, the last. I don't time. remember the last time I seen. That was the last scene I actually remember. Oh, oh. and the, the car scene. The fire. I'm on fire. No, the scene I actually did remember was this. When he was trying. He should have said I, I had sex with you as a burnt body. Yeah. That's the scene I actually do remember. And the rest of it, I still don't even know why they were in jail. I actually had no clue why they were in jail. I literally looked them like. Okay, and then I went back. You're like, why are they there? Exactly. And then you're like, oh. And then yeah. you went back. <laughs> she can tell you. That entire, the, the entire time that they were on screen, I literally was just on Twitter talking trash. Oh, my God. We discussed this on the Q&As. Mm -hmm. So, um. That does not mean to me any of that fucking fan fiction, though. Dumb. No. Oh, I will block you. Yeah, all the way. So, um, I'm trying to find Jazz's first <coughs> one, but I don't... Jazz, another sax symbol. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I think... Are you sure the first one was that I told myself? That's what I'm making... That's what I was making sure. Because you know she likes to send, like... Is Jazz a little girl or boy? I don't know. I always think it's a guy, but I don't know. I think... Oddly enough, in the Teen Wolf fandom, I think everybody is a guy, pretty much. Yeah, it's actually really Except weird. for, um, oh, I don't I, know. I've kind, of, I've kind cool. of realized that, like, compared but to a lot of But there are a lot of, my, of guys. Uh, compared to a lot of my fandoms, yeah, that actually is probably the most males that I've actually interacted with, which mm -hmm. I love. I actually mm -hmm. love the fact that I have male fan. It's so hard to find a, a fan of a show that's a male, especially sh shows that are a little bit more corny-ish. Right. Or, like, I just... Like, one of my friends just released that he's a fan of Galavik, and I'm like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Why did we, I not know this before? Right? We've been talking about all this other comic book shit, and I just found out that you like one of my favorite shows. I'm like, Galavik. wait. Bitch. Yeah, I love. I, and this is my thing. I'm like, wait, you like hunting and camping when we're not talking about comic books, but you watch a show, a musical about. <laughs> I'm like, what is your life? Right? <laughs> That's I just, funny. I just found out about it. I was just like, okay. So Jazz, another sex I found symbol, it to be hilarious. Is, <laughs> says, who, who does camping? Told hunting, myself. Comic books. I would never watch does. this show again. And that included why the finale. Why do they always have a British accent? But I went Are and did it anyway. And now I'm angrier than I was after season four. I'm so hateful of everything, Marish. That I've almost forgotten my hate for Stalia. Don't do it, Jazz. Yes! Yes! Don't do it, Jazz! Me and you are on the same page. This was the first time I wasn't disgusted by a scene, uh, <laughs> by them together in a scene. That is not okay. For a moment, I thought Jeff might pull Vampire Diaries and uh, with Scott and thought, oh no, this guy might be writing some good plot. But nope, not even close. Why can't Scott die? Why? He should be dead. He was dead for like 15 minutes. But evidently a true alpha is immortal now. And how did Mason even know where Scott was? Like at all. He didn't even tell Liam. Don't know what this says about me other than the fact I need to go to therapy. But that's just something so attractive about a psychopath. And Theo is pushing me off the edge. <laughs> anyway, who is your favorite TV show psychopath? And why? It was close. I'm sure I have several. Oh, I have several. Yeah, and especially with movies where I'm like, ooh, hello. So, but... current fave, Hannibal Lecter. And actually, the guy who's playing Red Dragon right now on, on Hannibal. As you guys know, I am a huge fan of Hannibal. I love their static. I love She's the a Hannibal fanable. I am. I am. I'm right on my sleeve and my heart right here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's probably my favorite psychopath right on the show. Delicious. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. Will. On Hugh Darnsey's character. 
on Hannibal is more of a psychopath. You think so? <laughs> That's yes. funny. Will Graham is a psychopath on this show. Uh-huh. Really uh-huh. Of it. Um, another psychopath I really, really love, uh, Peter Hill. Yeah. Um, I think he out. Theo is actually almost out Peter and Peter, which says he's a lot. getting there because he's, he's starting to get up in his feelings. I think that super moon affected him too. Yeah. Um, my next favorite psychopath. Faith from Buffy. Mm. She's a really good psychopath because she's a psychopath where you you want to root for her to kill everyone in the room. You're like, yeah, girl, do it. Right? <laughs> I'm a little turned on. And then you're like, oh, honey, you want to kill the whole school. Crowley's a good psychopath. But see, I never actually saw Crowley as a psychopath. I saw him as an opportunist. That's He's true. a businessman. Yeah. Crowley is a businessman. Now, we're going to talk about some psychopaths. Let's talk about those angels, though. <laughs> yes. Those angels are some psychopaths. See, that's what you're you you the angels worse than the demons, though. You run such a fine line because on one side of the psychopath line, you have Donovan. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, you have Theo. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I want to be on the Theo side. Like, if I'm going to be killed, at least it's going to be pretty and entertaining. You know who else was a good psychopath? Mm-hmm. Tony on Skins. Mm-hmm. I know people are not going to think that, but I'm like, <laughs> if you know Skins, and you know how Tony was, especially when he got hit by that... Mm-hmm. Oh, I, yeah, oh was... I was like, "Do you did you ever see that?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Tony got hit by a bus, <laughs> and Tony went <laughs> off the chain, and I was like, "I'm wait, is he all... still alive?" Yeah, Tony got no. Tony survived it, but That's Tony fine. was Tony was um one of those people that he liked to manipulate everyone to his own will. So in a weird way, it was like him getting like his getting him his coming up with, but then he survived. And then he was still fucked up. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm still here for all your shit. Right. I'm still rooting for you, Tony. I'm still rooting for you, Tony. It sounds ridiculous. So he was my probably... And I don't think he would even be considered a psychopath by a lot of people. But he definitely was. I think you need to watch Skins with me. At some point, I think I will. Yeah. I think I will. Skins was a lot of fun. This was the first few seasons. And then you'll be like, oh my god, all these people are on Game of Thrones. And I'm like, yeah. Oh no! There's a psychopath for you! Cersei. And Joffrey. And Joffrey, yes. If we're going to talk about some psychopaths right there. I love it. Those are, now that's a group of psychopaths that I can get down with. It that says, whole King's Landing. Oh, girl. Her I, walking naked through that. So I was like, ooh, mama. Just, just family that was, with that. And you could just tell she was getting, like, because at first people were like, oh, I started to feel sorry for her. I was like, uh-uh, you don't feel bad for Cersei. Because Cersei takes care of Cersei. As soon as she got a thing and the mountain picked her up, the zombie mountain picked her up, it was exactly. like, he was like, I got you, queen. She's like, I know you do. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that, now, that's a show that actually has some really good psychopaths. Yes. Like, everyone's a psychopath. Little so. finger. But he's kind of on that Crowley line, too. I was going to say, he's an opportunity. Littlefinger is that type where he's like, oh, you don't do business with me? Shut up. I'm like, I'm here for this. I was waiting for him to kill that dude's mama. Uh, Eliza? Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for it, too. I was just like, I wonder how they're going to do it. I think it's going to kind of make him, like, kind of shimmy (laughs) it. We talked about this a little bit last night. It says Anonymous says, the fact that this cast and show only acknowledges their F-ups and criticism. One more. Can I hold on? One more shaggy fan is awesome. The father from Shameless. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh sorry. God, Frank. <laughs> I can't even deal with Frank right now. <laughs> sorry. I just threw a Frank. I was like, that's oh, actually the yeah. He's a mess. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so. um <laughs> Only acknowledges their criticism by mocking <laughs> fans and being dicks about things. Does not say good things about them, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we talked about that a little bit during the podcast. It's <laughs> something about... Um, I'm trying to think of what the latest one was. Because he was like, oh yeah, we have people tell us all the time that they love the mysteries and that they love how much work we put into the interpersonal relationships. And I'm like, are these people your mom? And does your mom watch the show? I was going to say who, I think it's his staff and his buddies that he does drugs with. And I think it was, there we go. It's his dealer. (laughs) (laughs) And it hit all his little F boys. Mm -hmm. I think it's those people, those people that are there to prop him up saying, Jeff, this is a great idea. Yeah. I think it's just, and I think it's also his staff of writers who are afraid of him because they know they'll get fired. So they're just, like, we said last night, that one writer who was like, so is she a werewolf or a coyote? He's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it uh, was just Jeff because... Davis is our favorite psychopath. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. I know. You tickled yourself with that one. I am frightened in my spirit. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> You're out of control. This is what Jeff ruins lives, literally. <laughs> oh my god. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. Um, I recognize Tracy, Corey, and Hayden, but who was the fourth revived Chimera? <laughs> I read on Twitter that it was Donovan, but the dude looked nothing like Donovan. I would say it could be Josh, but there are too many similar looking dudes this season to be sure. It was Josh. Oh, it was Josh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to go back no. a few times because I was like, it doesn't look like I couldn't him, but I said, oh, it must be a random guy. But then when he stood fully up again, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. that's." Your... I wonder why he didn't revive. They probably didn't have the actor. For Donovan? But, yeah, for Donovan. But I need him... If he would have revived Donovan, that would have been amazing. Well, the thing is that Donovan will probably pop up if they're smart. That if they're be, smart, that would be so be honest, good if, if Donovan, Donovan popped, popped up. that up, that guarantees even more that you'll get Dark Styles. Mm-hmm. And probably even more fucked up shit. Yeah. Because they'd be like, I thought you were out of my life. He's like, guess who's back, bitches? Surprise! Come. Coming through that day, I'm going to axe through that wall. Another good psychopath. <laughs> I mean, The Shining, come on. Oh, yeah. That, that, now, that's a psychopath to um, take home the mama. He, Tori Marie 1175, um, I believe she's the first <laughs> time asker. I don't, I don't remember, uh, I don't recall yeah, I don't the name, so either. hello, welcome. Um, it says, I was really, to the podcast, yeah. I'm sorry about this. I was, <laughs> I was really hoping for five, oh, I am really hoping for 5B, they decide that they need some adult help to deal with Theo. So back come Arjun and Peter Hale. My 30-year-old self misses the grown-ups. I need Peter and Theo together at least once on screen, even though it might kill me. I agree. I kind of want that, too. Ooh. I agree with that. And Kate. I'm actually so. honest, That was something that was missing, was the adults. Yeah. I mean, because, yes, we did well, have Well, again, yes, you have, have Mama. these children that are dealing with these really, really adults. Like, they have Theo, but then they also are dealing with the doctors. Mm -hmm. and. The doctors are these overtly kind of supernatural yeah. adult kind of things. So. Yeah, and that's the thing that I actually, even though they had the sheriff, the sheriff is in this thing where for seasons he's been denying the supernatural mm -hmm. existing. The mama understands, but the mama works all the time, so she's not exactly. really in the picture. She's not really there. The, the few adults that you really had who could have a handle on supernatural, you can more they don't use, which is mm -hmm. stupid. Because they probably, out of outside of the origins, probably have the best experience dealing with the supernatural or having knowledge of them but they didn't use them you have Dean who would also be a good source of the supernatural but he was like let me leave out of town and I still end up getting fucking caught doing something probably for Scott I actually do feel like he was doing something for Scott he always whenever he leaves town it always comes back to him oh yeah him. yeah yeah you had the Ardens which probably is the best if not the most equipped you have guns like if you can't do anything at least use Ardens guns and weaponry like here you have a guy who has a whole bestiary that you barely need to have. You don't understand. Let's be honest, you really don't understand the bestiary the way he would. And you don't use him. And honestly, you're only linked to the hells who also have knowledge of everything, at least for freaking Beacon Hill Supernatural. Mm -hmm. There. And, of course, we don't even know if Peter Hill is alive because the last time we saw him, he was in... He is trapped in Ross and uh, the Alex Eye. Would that be the way that he comes back? Is, is that he'll come out of the eye? Mm -hmm. Naked, like the Terminator? Yeah. Coming up, slowly? Just like Jackson when he mm -hmm. changed. I actually would be. I would totally be here for that. And actually, I did appreciate that they did that, Superna that, um, that Terminator reference. That was kind of cool. That is so funny. But yeah, the adult aspect did add, add a different layer because the, the adults were on one of those weird things where they either knew or they didn't know. Mm -hmm. So that way they were kind of there for the kids. Well, now they have Natalie Martin, but she has just weird... First of all, no I don't one knows count, what's going on with her and they're not her, taking the time to figure I it out. I don't count her as an adult because <laughs> even though she's Lydia's mama, we never really knew her from the, even, well, exactly. even before that. And for her, she has a fucked up relationship with Lydia and then on top of that, you have to deal with the fact that she's one of those people that saw the supernatural and she still denies it. She denies his worst with Sheriff. At least Sheriff, after a while, would be like, look, I understand. Right. I'm going to cover my eyes. She's just like, completely well, I, like, no. But I understand no. because she's like, 
we don't need to get involved. And for anyone to not get involved, your it's going to be Natalie been, Martin. Your daughter has been involved since day one. But she doesn't need to but be. The thing That's is the is issue. That, the thing is that you have not left the town yet, so you are responsible too. Mm -hmm. The moment that the community came after your ass, you needed to be all up in this shit. Right. Like any normal mother. It's ridiculous. Here, let's do, uh, we have two more time for two more questions, and then we'll start getting set up for the podcast. I want to do Liddy X Martins. Uh, I like her. She was so cute. She said, sadly, haven't gotten great Wi-Fi on holiday, so can't watch the 5B finale tonight, <sighs> nor can I live tweet or even send a Q&A question. I've only got Wi-Fi for now, so I'm going to send my cue to the Q&A now. If you're wait, saying wait, wait, holiday, wait. are you from England? Well, she's or, somewhere in Europe, I'm or, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, are you from, like, the UK? Or are you from, like, Europe? Because usually that's the only people I know that use holiday. Holiday. If we took a holiday. Oh, yeah. Or oh, yeah. Let me it know. Actually, be, message us and let us know where you're from. It would be so nice. Holiday. Uh-uh. Come on. Come on. Celebrate. Uh-huh. So, she Your says, nice, thank you. Um, <laughs> I love this question so much. All right. She says, so what did you think of tonight's episode and the insert shocking cliffhanger? Also, the Steo scene. <laughs> Can't believe insert inevitable crappy twist <laughs> they put in to make it interesting. Train wreck. <laughs> um, are you guys excited for 5B? Any theories on what's going to happen next season? Love you guys. We love you too, Lydia X Martin. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was cool, I guess. <laughs> um, it wasn't unentertaining. It got really confusing. The cuts were pretty ridiculous. It was, it was really confusing. The cliffhanger wasn't really a cliffhanger. The cliffhanger, the cliffhanger. Yeah, I still don't understand what the cliffhanger was. I think it was supposed to be the zombies. And I think it was supposed to be, okay, so I know for sure for but Styles, like it was Styles finding chair. Cliffhanger. Shared. The zombies, I think they were supposed to the cliffhanger would have been Scott being on the verge of death and you not knowing if Scott died. That would have been the cliffhanger. Because where they could have ended it is her saying, Roar! And then stopping it. You know, mm -hmm. you're like, oh my god, Scott! But yeah. they couldn't have keep, kept that a secret for like, that long. Like, literally, the, the shots they should have had was, if you wanted to do a cliffhanger, Styles finding his dad on the floor. Yeah. That was, and, that sh and he should have been unconscious. Yeah. That, that should have been one cliffhanger. Scott getting... You could have either done Scott with Liam fighting. Yeah. And you or you could have even or given us Scott waking up, but I would I would want him, I wish he would have flashed his eyes and they would have been yellow mm -hmm. or they would yeah, have they had, changed. They, had a, they should have done something with Scott where it would have been like, okay, this is the cliffhanger for us to come back. I Like, does he still have his The alpha? zombie thing, I don't think they needed that zombie thing as their cliffhanger, but I thought it was an interesting idea. Well, it's idea. not a cliffhanger. It's not really a cliffhanger. Yeah. But, um, if they had just shown the first, you know what they should have do. done? They should have shown him stabbing the neck of one person, and that could have been the cliffhanger on the first right. one, he would have got the cliffhanger. They didn't have to show every single person. Like, exactly. No. Um, what he did to Lydia. Yeah. Lydia being left on the ground. I said last night what they should have done is that should have been, we should have, actually for her, we should have seen the scene to bring it back to the flash forward. Because mm -hmm. that, people forgot that that was a flashback. That's why but, I said start in the Icon House, end in the Icon House. But the thing is, what they did is they left her on the ground, which is not a cliffhanger because we already know where she goes. We know where she goes. So her story, you could have actually gone back to the fast forward. And then you would have been like, because remember, I think the last scene was her trying to get out and she got captured again. Didn't, didn't she get captured yeah. again? That's the cliffhanger that you should have left on her. Yeah. Which is she was back at the Icon House with that group. And then who else is there? Malia. She was in the... And still not necessarily a cliffhanger. Now, if we had seen her scene yeah. where she was in the den and then her, her mom, mom walked up, up, that, that would have been, been fantastic. Exactly. If you just saw the shadow of the mother, cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we should have brought it to the show. Girl, exactly. Like, those are the cliffhangers you should have had. Because every single character would have had a cliffhanger outside of Kira and, like, some other, and Dean and, like, the mama. But everyone else would have had a cliffhanger. Actually, even Kira, you could have actually shot to wherever she was and tried to figure, especially if you're Kira saying, in and of herself would have been a cliffhanger. Just show me a picture of Kira. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, well, the thing is, all they could do for Kira, they could have shown her eyes starting to glow. She could have Something. still been talking in her sleep. Because yep. the thing is, is that we know that she's doing this thing. You could have shown her talking in her sleep her mom and dad just watching over her. Actually, that would have been a reference from an Asian horror movie. But 
it would have been perfect because you would have been like, I guess that. That would have been the cliffhanger exactly. for her. You just needed a small scene. You could have had that scene from a previous episode. But you just needed to show that scene. And the thing is, they didn't do it. So therefore, they screwed up the cliffhangers. Instead, they gave us too much and too little. And too little. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. Too much and too little. You know, you're just a little too late. So, am I excited about 5D? Meh. I even said it. I was like... Am I even going to remember what happened in 5A? Because I'm not going to rewatch it. I'm going to be honest. Oh, no. I actually... If I actually, someone does a super cut of all the Theo scenes, maybe. I'm actually going to be that person. I was like, I actually rather watch season one and season two over again. I do actually I, want to rewatch. I was looking yeah. at a fan vid the other day, and I was like, oh, I forgot all of this happened. I actually did enjoy watch rewatching. I think Meg did, too, rewatching uh, season A. Yeah, 3A. And she actually is one of those people, she barely kind of saw season one and two. So mm -hmm. I think when Meg comes home, we should actually Yeah, do a little rewatch. one, two, uh, do For a whole weekend. I think That'd I be take so a weekend much home. Fun. When she's home, I think we do a whole weekend just doing the first two seasons. Mm -hmm. And that would be fun. I agree. I'd rather do that for my for my 5B than watching 5A. Yay. All right. And 4 doesn't really exist to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. It's a mess. All <laughs> right. Well, um, I think that is it, you guys. We are going to get set up for the podcast. Of course, uh, keep an eye out for that. We're on SoundCloud, iTunes, um, Twitter, Tumblr, Erwer, and... Um, Oh, Lord, we'll see you in six months. <laughs> no, you'll probably see us before then. We'll do some uh, little catch-ups here and there okay, so and know, some little round She's going to want to do something. Exactly. I might go to HowlerCon, so we'll do an update if I do that. I ain't going nowhere. Um, yeah. Doing the dang thing and what not. Home. It's like night, Momo. All the we come to the end of the road. <laughs> I was gonna be like, you don't love God. <laughs> okay. What's wrong with you? Hear her. <laughs> I was saying this is the most ratchet it's so gospel ratchet. song I've ever heard. And it's by someone but so I respectful. Love it. She is the person who does this song I is love so respectful. This song is Y'all so love God. This song is so respectful. It's done by one of the most respectful people in the gospel community. And I have no clue where this ratchetness came from. But I need people to go to their local station, yes. local R and B station, Erica local Campbell, song, and request a song. Because I think she's gonna po post it on her I'll page. I'll post it on my I'm page. Post it on my page. I, I think we need six thirty three. I think we might need to post it on. I think we need to post love it on. God. You love God. What's wrong with you? you. <laughs> it's so <laughs> rather when you hear, you're like, is this a new nanny song? I know, you like, uh, oh, but you're praising, but at the same time. <laughs> got my halo wand. I need people to go to their studios, and I need people to get their Call phones. In. Get their text. DJ, Call. pick up your phone. I'm, I'm on, on the, the request, request line. line. <laughs> 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 Bye, you guys.